God this morning. I don't know about you, but I could have been laying in the hospital this morning. I could have been dead sleeping in my grave this morning. But great, but the grace of God this morning that we are alive and well this morning. Do I have any well folks in the house this morning? Oh, praise be to God this morning. He kept the robber and the murder out of our home this morning. We thank God this morning. Most of all, he kept the deaf angel away from our home this morning. Our loved ones as well this morning. I don't know about you, but my loved ones are well this morning. Thank you, Jesus, this morning that he is God this morning. And he deserves the praises of his people. It's so good to see so many of you out this morning. It's a good thing. I talked to one of my friends, and he said, man, people are not coming back to church no more. And, uh, and I just can't uh, concern myself with it. Uh, advising, doing my devotion, one preacher says that we need to ask God for a revival of the church. The church need to be revived right, again right, right, right. and we have to trust God that God is going to make this thing happen right. again amen. amen amen God bless you I know that the pandemic have changed a lot of things and, uh, but uh, it's time that we be a church again amen uh, 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 listen to some of the four gospel preachers and one of, one of them was not, he's not full gospel, but he preached at the full gospel conference and he said God had to put a stop to us because we was not doing it right. Yeah. And now that God has stopped us and started us again, we need to do it right. right. Law Street Baptist Church is a church that has a spirit of excellence. I'm telling you now, when you put, put your me. best with the Lord, then it shall be called excellent. And that's why the Lord talk about a spirit of excellent. Because that's the Holy Ghost. Amen. So we put our best foot forward. God is going to do the rest. When we trust God, God is going to make a way. Because he is the way. When we do it the way God wants us to do. When we say what God wants us to say and how he wants us to say it, how can we fail? We won't do anything but go higher and higher and get better and better and better when we do it the way the Lord wants us to do it. Amen? Amen. That includes uh, our giving. I want to let you know. Tithes and offering. Tithes and offering. That's what the Bible says. Not me. That's what the Bible says. Not me. God said that. Not me. And Jesus didn't change it when he came. Tithes and offering. Amen? Somebody told Pastor, don't, don't tithes and no offering. I said, how am I going to know how much to give when God has already told me how much to give? Give as he has prospered you. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You know you ain't going to keep that. Amen? Tithes and offering. Be consistent with it. Next Sunday is Grandparents and Grandchildren Sunday. I want all the grandparents to bring their grandchildren. If their children don't bring their children, you bring your grandchild to church next Sunday. If y'all want to do something for them, go ahead and do it. What I'm asking is grandparents and grandchildren um, uh, day. If they're in another church, ask the parents, can they come? But next Sunday is grandparents and grandchildren's Sunday. Next Sunday. And the minister can, she can start working, can start adding to her sermon right now. And, and, and but we're going to share with that next week. Next week. Amen. We're going to bless the Lord with our grandchildren and with our grandparents. Amen. Invite other people to come. Amen. Prayer line. Get on the prayer. The brothers, y'all did a good job the other night. Need more of y'all to get on that prayer line. Get on the prayer line. Amen. God bless you. God keep y'all. Continue to pray, minister. Psalms 27. 
is what we're going to preach on today. Uh, let's get ready. I'm going to preach something really that uh, I've been trying to work on all week long. And it's, a, it's, it's something that can bless our heart. The book of Psalms, number 27. Psalms number 27. Amen. Is he not worthy? Is he not worthy? Is he not worthy to be praised? Hallelujah. Psalms 27. The Lord 
is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and then they fell. The host should encamp against me. My heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. In this will I be. Come on, man. One thing that I have desired of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. Why? For in time of trouble, he shall hide me. In his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle, shall he hide me. He will set me upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies that surround about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice and have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, seek my face. My heart said unto thee, your face will I, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thou face far from me. Put not thy service away in anger, for thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When mama and daddy forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me now, Lord, thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path. Because of my enemies, deliver me, not over unto the will of my enemies. For false witness are risen against me, such as breed out cruelty. I had fainted. Unless I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait on. Now that's shouting stuff right there. <laughs> the cycle of a Christian life. And what are the cycles? It's simply, we praise, then we pray, then we praise again, then we pray, and then we praise again, then we pray, then we praise, then we pray, then we praise, then we pray. Hallelujah. Help me, Lord. Hallelujah. Please, sir, have mercy. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Help me, Lord Jesus. Don't turn your back on me. Praise the Lord, somebody. But help me, Jesus. Hallelujah every day. But every day, pray, Lord, help me. Lest I die. The cycle. That's us. That's us going round and round. Amen? Amen? One day we full of praise. The next day we praying a desperate prayer. Amen? Why the cycle of a Christian life go from praise to prayer? Because that's the way life is. Sometimes you're up and sometimes you're down. Sometimes you, 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 you're feeling good, but sometimes you feel like a nut. Like you're about to lose your mind. Up in here. Up in here. Up in here. So when I praise, I got to pray. And if anybody could testify what it means to praise and to pray, it's King David. David makes it clear that when he, when he first opened up and looked like he said, I want you to understand something. The Lord is my light 
and he is my salvation. The Lord not only saved, but he is salvation. He not only gives us salvation, but he is salvation. And the Lord is the light of my life. Without the light, I cannot see where I'm going. If I don't have God in my life, I have no light in my life. And I have to watch this one enemy that stays with me, that causes me to pray when I should be praising. And that enemy is fear. And that's why he said, I got the light and I got his salvation. So whom shall I fear? If I'm going to fear anybody, I'm going to fear God. Fear in this sense means respect and reverence. So since he's my light and my salvation, I'm going to reverence him and I'm going to give him glory, but I'm going to respect him because of what he done for me. Not, not only that, the Lord is the strength of my life. And if God is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Amen, somebody? You can say it if you want. Fear always going to be there with you. And there is always something you're going to be afraid of. But God will give you strength so you can live with that fear. He's not going to move the fear, but he's going to give you the strength to live with the fear. There is a lot of things to be afraid of. Amen, somebody? You know, I'm afraid of these little brothers with those big guns that they got. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody? Uh, my, my, my salesman, the car salesman was telling me, they say, Pastor, you can get that, that little pistol, but that ain't nothing compared to what these little brothers be carrying. Yes, sir. Amen? I can fear going into in the highway and getting in a deadly accident. I fear, help me somebody, that one of these ridiculous young men who feel like they're doing something come into the church house and kill people. Yes, sir. Amen? Yes, sir. Somebody help me here. Can I do a sidebar? They got one man says, you worried about buying a pistol to protect yourself. He said, but the most powerful weapon you can have in America is for you to go and vote. And I said, whoa. Come on, y'all. Why is that? You could always buy a gun because they're not putting laws against buying guns, but they're passing laws to stop you from voting. Amen? So I fear sometimes. It, it concerns me sometimes about how fast America is going the wrong way. And I may be going to the end of my life, but my grandchildren still got to live in this world. So the Lord got to give me strength. Every day. Why? Because when I get up, verse 2 said, when the wicked and even my enemies, and it's not one of them, it's more than one. My enemies with the S and then those who are against me. And help me somebody. They come upon me and these some cruel people because they want to eat up your flesh. They want to tear you apart. Amen, somebody? From limb to to limb. People can be so cruel at times. And David says they all around me they want to jump up and not only do they want to hurt me but they want to eat me up. Cannibalism. They want to eat me for dinner and eat me for breakfast. How you do that? They talk about you in the morning and they talk about you at night. He said when they come, the Bible says they stumble and they fall. Somebody help me here? There's a difference when somebody, I, heard, I didn't want to, you kind of stole my stuff this morning, but, but Scott, there are some that stumble. There's a difference that you can stumble, but you don't fall. But your enemies will stumble and fall. One writer said, what happened in the Garden of Gethsemane when, when they came up against Jesus? Help me somebody. He said that Jesus said, who are you looking for? They said, Jesus. He said, here am I. And the Bible said they fell backwards. I stopped by to tell you, don't worry about your enemies. Because the breath of God will blow them down. Oh, y'all missed your shout right there. 
Hallelujah, somebody. When they come, then he, he gets into the next one. He said, not only enemy, not only foes. He said, there is a host that's all around me. Somebody go help me here. There is a host of, uh, all the way around me, and, and, and my heart will not fear. He said, don't war rise against me. And this is the part that really makes me shout. I'm going to have confidence that I'm going to make it anyway. Yes, Somebody going to help me here? Yes, I stop by to tell you that no matter how big it is, how bad it is, I want you to have the confidence that you're going to make it anyhow. You're going to make it any, yes, I'm going to use the word anyhow. Somebody help me here. And I'm not talking about when things are good. I'm talking about when things are bad. I, I'm not talking about when your, your enemies get knocked down. I'm talking about when they cover you and when they're all around you. David said, I'm still confident. David said, why, why, why are you confident? Somebody going to help me here. David said, I am confident for all of those things that have come upon me because I've experienced God. Is there anybody up in here have experienced the deliverance of God? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can I help you and move on right quickly? David says, I fought the lion and I won. Then the bear showed up. And I beat him too. Then Goliath showed up. And I beat him too. Then Saul showed up. And I beat him too. Then the Philistine showed up. So why am I afraid of the Philistine when I got rid of all the others? So I'm confident that the Lord will give me strength, Sister King, to overcome whatever I got to face. Amen, somebody? Can I bring it home? Sickness all in my body. Test after test, doctor after doctor, bill after bill. Don't know how. Storm in the Gulf, storm in the, above us, storm falling out the sky. I'm encompassed by my enemy, but yet and still here I stand with confidence. One thing that I decide, help me somebody, how I'm going to do it, preacher, because I want to spend time with the Lord. I don't want nothing else. I just want one thing. I want to be with God. Somebody help me here. I want to sit and ask him questions. Ain't nothing wrong with questioning God. Lord, why me? You, you might say that. Amen, somebody. Why my family? Why my children? Why my church family? Why my pastor? Go ahead and ask it because that's the one thing I desire, that if I spend time with him, if I'm on his side, I can ask him what I want. Jesus said, I'm going to take it further. Ask what you desire, and it shall be given unto you. I need some real people up in here that got confident that if I ask God for whatever I desire, God going to give it to me. I don't have no confidence people on this side. What I got on this side? I need some people that when you pray, that you pray with God. Well, it's not enough. I'm coming back over here. I need some people that believe that God will make a way out of no way. I need some help on that side. Ain't God all right? I'm sure. For in the time of trouble, I feel like testifying. For in the time of trouble, Somebody going to help me here? He's going to hide me. Somebody help me here. He's going to hide me in his pavilion. That means he's going to cover me when I'm in trouble. Hallelujah, somebody. No wonder I can praise him when things are good and praise him when things are bad because he already got me covered. Y'all better shout up in this thing. He said, he got me so covered that I'm going to raise my head over my troubles. Why I'm so confident? Why I'm so sure? Because I'm looking down at my... Y'all missed that. Y'all, and, and, and let me come on this side. Why I'm so sure I'm going to make it? Because I'm looking down. Y'all miss it. Y'all miss it. I'm not looking forward at my trouble. Amen, somebody? Because it may not come tomorrow. And I'm not looking back at my troubles. 
because yesterday's troubles are over with. But I'm looking at today's trouble. And I'm not looking back or forward, but I'm looking over it. And if I could look down on it, somebody help me. I can see my way out of my trouble because I'm looking. And while I'm in that way, look, look, look. While I'm looking down on my trouble, I'm shouting over the place. I'm giving sacrifices of praise to God because I'm standing over my trouble. My trouble is not over me. I'm over my trouble. Somebody help me here. And I'll break out with a song and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, way maker. I look over and say, the Lord made a way. Ain't God all right? I was look, I'm saying that I, I am a soldier because I'm standing over my enemy. I see my exodus because I, I see my way out because I'm looking down. Hear me, Lord. Watch how you see, see where he go from praise to prayer. He just said, I sang praises. Then he turned around in the next verse. He said, Lord, hear my voice and answer me. But Lord, when you say, Seek my faith. I'm looking for you. Somebody help me here. It's, you, you, you miss your shout. You miss your shout. When God says, see my face. When God says, seek my face. Somebody help me here. God says so. Ain't God all right. He must got something big for me. So my heart says, since you said it, I'm going to look for you. Not what my mama said, what my daddy said, but what God. Help me somebody. If God says seek his face, my heart says your face will I seek. Amen, somebody? He's still in prayer mode. Hide not your face for from me. One writer said they add that word for in it. It's not in the original interpretation. Not for, but when you can't hear from God. I'm, I'm going to testify, I'm gone. <laughs> I was in that hospital bed and all I could say, Lord, I know you hear. Right. Somebody going to help me here. I, I, I know you're there, but Lord, answer me. Somebody help me here. Lord, I need you. I can't stop coughing. I'm, I'm coughing 12 out of 24 hours. Lord, I need you. Got medicine coming in from everywhere. Got groups of doctors come in. Somebody help me here. Lord, I need you. No answer came to me. Ain't God all right? The devil tried to come in there. Hallelujah, somebody. But I want to stop by and let you know that when you are anointed with the Spirit of God, the devil can't stay around you. I saw him in the corner of my eyes, but when I turned my eyes, he flee away. It wasn't me, but it was the anointing that made the devil leave. Somebody say, yeah. Ain't God all right? I thank God for how the nurses treated me, but it wasn't the nurses. It was the anointing of God in that room. Ain't God all right? My prayer warrior couldn't come in. Help me somebody. So it was on me and the anointing. Ain't God all right? The doctor used to come in. Hallelujah, somebody. Ain't God all right? Stand at the foot of my bed. Hallelujah. And put his head down. And then he'll look up in the sky. And then he will start talking. It wasn't the doctor minister. It was the anointing. Hallelujah, somebody. So when you get to your job and people start acting crazy, it's not them, but it's the anointing on you. Ain't God all right? Oh, you miss your shout. Hallelujah. You don't worry about them. Ain't God all right? Because when mama and daddy forsake you, ain't God all right? 
the Lord will pick you up. Hallelujah. I said, Lord, I had a good mama and a good daddy. They didn't forsake me, but they died and they left me. Ain't God all right? And that's when I had to turn to the Lord. I couldn't depend on mama no more. I couldn't depend on daddy no more. I couldn't depend on my late pastor no more. But the Lord, help me somebody. He scooped me up. Help me somebody. Can I get in your Kool-Aid? The devil knocked you down. The devil messed you up when you fell to the ground. The Lord came and I say the Lord picked me up. Ain't God all right? Testify, Johnny. He picked me up, turned me around, put my feet on solid ground. Hallelujah. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord. Show me the way. Show me the way. The Lord will make away. Ain't God all right. He'll deliver me from my enemies. They can talk about me, but the Lord gonna bless me. Every time they put me down, the Lord picks me up. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm gonna wait on the Lord. What about you? I'm gonna wait on the Lord. Say yeah. Wait on him. He going to strengthen this first. And then when he strengthened the heart, he going to strengthen the arms. Somebody going to help me here? You can be strong as you want, but if you got a bad heart, you in trouble. Do I have a witness up in here? Ain't God all right? You can be as rich as you want to be. But if you got a bad heart, a weak heart, help me somebody. You in trouble. But when the Lord strengthen your heart, huh? That's where he going to go at. He going to strengthen your heart. When he strengthen the heart, he strengthens the mind. He'll keep you from going crazy. I was reading and the guy said, to, you need to memorize scriptures. He said, read it 50 times. Sister King, the first I can go was two times because I was shouting after that. Y'all missed that. I was supposed to read it 50 times. But every time I read that scripture, read that song, I could feel, I ain't playing with y'all. I could feel myself rising, raising, going up and up and up in the spirit I'm telling you right now the next time hmm, when things are going bad for you go to Psalms 27 you know what's best memorize it amen memorize that scripture I think Brother Green will know that scripture by heart memorize that scripture it's going to help you it's going to bless you. It's going to change things in your life. Let me not pray, play with you right now. Psalms 27. When you read it and believe it, it's going to knock down whatever is getting you in your way and you reaching your destiny. And whatever it is, if it's healing, 
it's, if it's prosperity, if it's your children, whatever it is. I started reading that songs and I got up this morning and I said to myself, it's so quiet in my neighborhood. Amen? And that's the spirit of God blessing that neighborhood. And if your neighborhood is acting up, get your Bible and walk down the street and read Psalms 27 out loud. He's going to knock down everything that's going to get in your way. Before you get in there in that doctor's office, read Psalms 27. When you get in the doctor's office, read Psalms 27. When, before they come in, read Psalms 27. When you leave out of that office, read Psalms 27. When you get home, read Psalms 27. When the phone rang with your results, read Psalms 27. And after your result, I don't care what it is, read Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. What am I going to be afraid of? Wait on the Lord. Tell your neighbor to wait on the Lord.